If you remember last time, I started making some gap fills um, for the glass urn, which I will then place in, in the missing areas. These fills would act both as support and aesthetical fills. To make a mold for my plaster fills, I decided to use the two parts molding and casting technique. Firstly, um, I used a plasticine um, to create a plasticine base uh, for my plaster fill. And I also put some uh, plasticine underneath my fill to raise it slightly over the surface of the base. Following this, um, I have this uh, solder which I cut into pieces. And this is going to create a keying for my two parts mold. This is an old example of a uh, um, two parts mold. And as you can see, they help the two parts mold to lock into each other. Also, you can see here um, two kind of bamboo sticks uh, in order to create channels so that um, later on um, I can pour my epoxy resin through these channels into my mold to take a cast for my plaster fills. As you can see here, I started building my wall along the kind of edges of my plasticine base. It's quite a simple process. You need a fresh and uh, soft plasticine to work on this because otherwise it gets really hard to mold the plasticine itself. So now I will start making the one part of the two parts mold in order to take the mold uh, from the underside of my plaster fill. I'm going to start measuring the molding rubber and the catalyst uh, which will be about uh, 400 grams of silicon rubber to five drops of the catalyst and catalyst actually helps fastening the um, setting process of the mold. Now it's time to add around five drops of catalyst into it. Once I put the silicone rubber mixture into the plasticine walls, I'll leave it for about 24 hours, so until tomorrow afternoon, before I can actually remove the whole thing and turn it around uh, to start making the um, second part of the mold. I had to prepare the epoxy resin uh, about an hour before I start casting. The reason for this is because um, when I mix the two parts of the um, epoxy resin, I have to mix it really, really well. And this causes uh, a lot of air bubbles uh, within the resin itself. Even though the urn uh, has a lot of uh, bubbles within the glass, I still do not want an excessive amount of air bubbles um, within my um, resin fill. For this reason, I left it for an hour and uh, now it's time to pour it um, into my mold. I prepared um, two plastic funnels uh, by cutting um, plastic disposable pipettes and I will place one of them here, which I will pour the resin in, and the other one will go in here so that I can also monitor um, when there's enough resin in the mold so that the resin might start coming up. That means that I have enough resin in my mold and I should stop pouring more. So I put some resin into the funnel and as you can see slowly, slowly, uh, the resin is going down. As you can see, the mold is now full. It doesn't take uh, any more resin inside the mold and I put my sign here saying that conservation in progress please do not touch and uh, I just put it here so that everyone they should not be kind of um, touching or trying to remove anything from this setup here um, until the resin has set. Mm -hmm. 